singing, you guys. Sing about the light that's come. darkness that covers a whole earth. The deepest darkness is over all the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and His glory appears over you. The darkness that covers the whole earth. Nations will come to your light. Woe and kings to the brightness of your a little song for Christmas there, but the light has come. Here's another one for you, Christmas.
service this morning to celebrate uh, communion, the Lord's Supper, Eucharist, uh, from whatever background you're from. This is a special time in the church. 
especially if you're a Christian. Um, it's, it just means so much to us is that we, we, we remember what Jesus has done for us, but we need something to just remind us, don't we? That his very body was died on the cross, almost beaten to death. I think he was so close to death at that point because he had to take it to the nth degree, to the, to the furthest area, but that's for us. And then the Jews. His blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. All the animals on the earth could have been sacrificed. Nothing would have changed. But the Son of God came. Jesus Christ died on the cross. So what we're asking you to do is kind of, as you stand on the next song, go both sides. There's elements. And then bring them back to your chair. And we'd like to share that together with you. Would you stand? Elements up.
close to me, come as you are. Close to you, come as you are. Would you, uh, I'm going to make a statement, and I hope you'll, you'll say it with me. I'm going to say the phrase, Villard, I died for you. Please, don't put my name in there. Put your own, okay? I just wanted you to be careful there. But would you say that with me together? Put your own, own name in that phrase, Villard, I died for you. Let's try it one more time. Villard, I died for you. Let's do it one more time because it's getting through your head. Villard, I died for you. That's what he's saying to you. He's saying, Diane, I died for you. And that's why we eat this with celebration, remembering he died for us. And we drink the blood. And we praise your holy name, Jesus. We worship you and you only. There are no other gods but you. You are the only God there is. And we worship you today in thanksgiving. Amen. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, what
Thank you that you make it okay for us in our soul. Deep in our souls, we know it is well with you. That's the joy and the hope that we have in you, Lord. And Holy Spirit, you're welcome here today. Come and rest on every person in this building. We ask for your blessing now in the name of Jesus. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see you here. If you're a visitor, special welcome. There's a little gray card that you might have received as you came in. We'd love to have you fill that out. And you regular visitors, please fill out, too, uh, your prayer requests and your comments on the back. We got a few cards last week, and w they were great. We re prayed over them in our weekly meeting. And um, I'm happy to report that the handwriting was a little bit better this time. <laughs> and we were actually able to decipher them, except for you. Uh, I won't tell your name. <laughs> We have a few announcements. Next Saturday, the 12th, is our last uh, second Saturday. And the topic and theme are gifting, and everybody gets to play, which is a theme that we have in the, in the Vineyard Church. And the gifts of the Spirit will be uh, discussed, and we'll be um, having some worship by Terry Olson. So look forward to next Saturday night at, uh, at 6.30, right here in the auditorium here, the last one for this year. It'll be a great time. On the 16th, I think is a Wednesday, um, there's a parents' night out. If you want a night uh, without your kids so that you can go shopping or do some errands or whatever you need to do and give the kids a treat to come here and play games um, and to uh, have a g fun evening together, uh, drop your kids off. Sign up at the back first, though, and uh, let us know that this is ha your, your kids are coming. And um, this is a very popular thing that happened last year, and it's going to be popular again this year. You notice that we have Christmas trees. There's one at the back called the Angel Tree, and there are 28 cards on there for kids that are needy. And um, last year, this was a big success. You go and you take a card. There's a whole procedure. You can see Amanda afterwards uh, at the back there at the table uh, about how that works, but you can take a card. You can bring a gift, and those kids, mostly from the Regency, will be benefiting from that. Let's give thanks to the Lord now as we prepare to receive the offering. Thank you, Lord, for what you've given to us. We thank you, Lord, that you gave us your son who died for us. We thank you, Lord, for that atonement of sin that makes us right with you. And, Lord, with gratitude, we give back to you. We pray that you would bless this offering as we receive it in the name of Jesus. Gentlemen, you may, take the, you may receive the offering. Um, I just wanted to mention to you again, uh, in case you didn't hear me the last 3,000 times, there are these books at the back, and it's called Managing God's Money. <coughs> this is a really good book. It can really help you with understanding Christian financial principles. And there's also The, uh, the Light, which is a booklet from the vineyard itself, and I think Villard will probably be saying more about this uh, on the series that we're actually having at the moment um, that we're going through. Uh, which will end, I think, right around New Year's time or in, in January. Great to see you all here. And now we're going to turn the service over to our senior pastor, Billard. Hi, how are you doing today? It's always good to have your wife come with you, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's been, it's just great serving in this church. I, I think Diane and I have had so much fun from the very beginning of serving, and one of the special privileges we've had is we have got to know each other, know other people in the church. We've got to know each other, but we got to know other people in the church, uh, and and we get 
close to people a lot of times. You know, the Nazarene movement, they're working on my phone. This is not my mic. It's the thing back there we found out. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> uh, it, it adds uh, background to, to what I'm saying. But John and uh, I, I'm getting sidetracked. Denise, would y'all come up for a moment? This is not their last Sunday at the church. <laughs> this is the last Sunday before Danelle and uh, what's his name? Joel, Joel come. Uh, and long overdue, long overdue, that we uh, need to say thank you so many, many times. And uh, we're looking forward to many more years, and not only just many more years, but uh, we're hoping that we're expanding the worship here at the vineyard, not really going back. Uh, my daughter was worshiping here with us as the leader, and you hear her every once in a while. Well, she told me one day, she said, Dad, I'm leaving. And uh, I said, no, you're not. I'm Dad. She said, yes, I am. I'm leaving. I'm moving to Austin. But she said, God has already got somebody in place, and it's John. And uh, that has been totally proven true. He's probably the most skilled uh, musician I've been around. Uh, he is very good. You saw it this morning. He, it's just incredible ability. His voice is one of the best voices I've ever heard. And uh, we're ex and, and, and I'll let you say something I, I, on this uh, in between the little deals in there. No, I said he's a great songwriter. He is a great songwriter. And Denise isn't bad. You've sang a lot of them. And uh, so uh, we've got two things to give you. Take that out of there. This is something so you won't forget us. <laughs> we we don't like people to forget us, you know. We uh, you served here how long? Turn all the lights down, and uh, after I do one more promo, I, I think I'm going to go when I really retire, you know, really retire, and get me a new mic, and I'm going to, I think I'd be good in promotion, but anyway, if you're new here today, and the case for Christ, it's an absolute must, and then if you have been here a while, and uh, this is, uh, you, or you've been in the church a long time, and you, you know everything about Lee Strobel. This book will tell you about the vineyard. And so we give this to new people at our 101, which we're planning on having in January the 19th. And uh, that'll help us. Okay, I want to start this video, and, uh, and they're going to turn the lights off. Seven years ago today. What's that you say? Mr. Marley died seven years ago this very day. Would it be too much to ask that you return to the work for which I pay you so handsomely? Mr. Cratchit! The fire's gotten cold, Mr. Scrooge. Come over here, Mr. Cratchit. What is this? A shirt. And this? A waistcoat. And this, the coat. These are garments, Mr. Cratchit. Garments were invented by the human race's protection against the cold. Once purchased... Cold burns. Cold is momentary, 
And coal is costly. There'll be no more coal burnt in this office today. Is that quite clear, Mr. Cratchit? Yes, sir. Now, please get back to work before I am forced to conclude that your services are no longer required. That's my kind of boss right there. Well, this sermon follows a Christmas uh, carol, which uh, this whole series is really such a neat series. I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun with it. Thanks to Dennis. He kicked us off last week. Didn't he? He did a good job. I thought it was better than usual. Didn't you? Yes. Uh, I really appreciate it, too, because having that help sometimes really take the, take the load off and to have it done so well. And it, it's not the easiest thing to do because you're having to tie it around this, uh, this movie or a song or something, and so it's a little challenge for us. But I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm having lots of fun with it. And, and I, I, I read, actually, before I started putting the sermon together, I read this devotional in this book that Dennis was telling you about. I gave almost every one of you one last Sunday. We had over 200. We've got a few left. And uh, I read through this twice before I even started. It, it was a very encouraging, well-written devotional time. And uh, each week, uh, you could uh, go ahead and read about next Sunday's sermon. And uh, this gives you a, a wider uh, image, uh, uh, understanding of where we're going in this series. I'm, I'm really excited about it, and I love, I'm loving doing this. It's from our uh, headquarters. And uh, I've nev they've never done this for us, but I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, beyond uh, a Christmas carol is really there's two words I want to kind of put in your mind this morning. Uh, one of the words is peace. Now, it's kind of old-fashioned, but I'd like for you to say that word literally out loud. Would you say it one? But say that word one more time. Now, would you say for sure that you have peace in your life? That, that's, really, uh, that's really what Christmas is all about, is telling you how to have peace in your life. And uh, the other word is the thing that causes us to lose our peace, and it's called fear. I, I, I want you to think about what is the big event that we're talking about right now. What, what is the big event? Some would point to the tree, and we would talk about, well, it's uh, Christmas in that, in that light. But you and I know that that's not the big event. The big event is to somehow come to a point again this Christmas that Christ is birthed in our life, afresh and anew, like a, a new event. A new event takes place in our spirit when Christ is born again, when he comes in and, and takes away the fear in our lives. Now, I'm going to show you quite a few clips. Now, he guided him by what? Fear. And a lot of times, fear is a controlling factor in our life. I don't think the sound is on. In the history of television, for a reason. I know the people. Well, uh, granted, but the people already want to watch the show. Uh-oh. That isn't good enough! They have got to be so scared to miss it, so terrified! Now, if I were in charge, and I am... <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I can help you. Here's the kind of thing I would have done. Grace, cue it up. Terrorism. Freeway killers. Now, more 
than ever. It's it is important to remember the true meaning of Christmas. Don't miss Charles Dickens' immortal classic, Scrooge. Your life might just die. I know that uh, some wounded because of somebody that walks in with a gun and just blows them away. That's new for America, isn't it? But we're starting, we're starting to live in some fear. We're starting to realize that something could invade, something could come into our lives that could be catastrophic. That could affect our lives. It could affect people we love. What is happening to our peace when this is all going on? It's being stolen. It's being stolen from us. Even though we know we should be in peace, we begin to have it stolen from us. I, I wonder if that's why the Bible said 365 times, fear not. Why 365 times? Because we are dense. And we forget. And when things like ISIS, these situations begin to happen... We begin to let it steal our peace, right? Loss of a job. It steals our peace. How are we going to make it? How are we going to survive? Here's why he said it 365 times, because he is our Savior. No matter how bad it gets, even if we're taken out, we know where we're going, right? There is some peace in that. 365 times because we forget, we begin to doubt that he is a deliverer, that he is a rescuer, that he is the person that can take care of every threat, every situation in our life. Is it, you know, I need to teach you a little on this. That's true, isn't it? And this side was very good at helping me. And I, I, I just feel like sometimes we need to actually kind of get involved in this thinking process. We actually need to say, yes, I do believe that I can be at peace. It is not an easy thing. When you think about Christ being born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, you can't help but think about the fact that was 2,000 years ago. The question really is, is he being reborn in your life today? Do you know for certain? That he lives in your life. You know, 2,000 years ago is a long time, isn't it? Last year is a long time. Last week for me. I, I'm, I met Katie again for the fourth time this morning. I think that's right, Katie. Katie? Katie? No. Okay. Kate. Okay. I, I met her again. See, I, I get to meet people yet last Sunday and meet you afresh again this Sunday. New people. I'm, it's great. Listen to this scripture that the angel said to her. Do not be afraid. Now, that's a scary thought when you think of an 18-foot angel maybe standing in front of you, and he says, don't be afraid. It must have been that she was afraid. Would you agree with me? Or he wouldn't have said that to her. See, God is not unaware of how circumstances affect. Worst year for terrorist attacks America's ever known. Now, instantly, I can almost say that's what when the when the doctor said I was going to have cancer, see, or I had cancer. That you know, you see what I'm saying. And you need to be be praying because see, we literally have people here that are are dealing with those very thoughts. The opening scripture: Be not afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You know why? 
She believed. She believed what the word had spoke it was. She believed Isaiah, which we'll read in a little, little bit later. She believed. See, belief begins to root out the fear inside of us. And that's, that's where the peace is. And it begins to root out things that are stealing our peace out here. You will conceive. Hang on to that word because that's a very important word. You will conceive. There will be a conception that takes place inside of you, and you will not only conceive, you will give birth. You will come to term. You will come to a place that a baby is born. And I want to come back to that in just a few moments. But I want to keep dealing with this area of peace because there really is no peace if you're going to try to find it out here. I mean, one day, I've got peace. And the next day, or maybe 30 minutes later, I don't have peace. Has your days gone like that? At one moment, I'm really comfortable. And then at the next moment, I'm not comfortable. At one moment, I feel like everything's going my way. And then the next moment, it's not going my way. I don't know about your day or your week, but that's the way my week goes. And if it, if, if it depended on out here, if I depended just on Diane or just on you or just on my friend, to make peace happen, it would not happen. Would you? Christmas is not what makes us happy. Your family all gathered around you at Christmas time. The presence of your loved ones give you joy. But if one of those loved ones is taken away from you, will your happiness remain? Not that you wouldn't be sad. Not that you wouldn't, you know, hurt. But yet the peace would still be there. Because why? We have something beyond. You know, I, I, get, I get the privilege of speaking at, at people's funerals many times. And, and I, I'm not saying that's something I look forward to, but it's almost more fun than weddings. But anyway, uh, by the way, I have someone here that I did perform a wedding on. Uh, it's good to have Chelsea and Andy with us today. And uh, uh, matter of fact, that goes way back because Jana was here and she came up with the phrase, I have a cup of coffee and we'll talk about Jesus. And that became our slogan. So we'll always be indebted to, to Chelsea's mom, Jana, for that. But the, the truth of it is, I, I, in, in funerals, many times I, I'm asked to do it. You know what the first question I ask? Do, do you know if this person was a Christian? And uh, if they say no, it, it's, a very, it's a very sad time for me. But you know why I get through that service? I, I, it hurts deeply when I preach a sermon because I, I have this great, it, it's like a, um, uh, it almost like a, uh, being in a closet, you know, claustrophobic. It's, it's almost like it, it, I have such a vivid feeling at that moment, it hurts. But when they say, yes, they knew Jesus Christ, it's like, wow, wow, that's, that's so good. about hope that goes beyond this grave and they and and they they can be ready for this moment so so it is, but still see the hope is always in what's inside and that's what i want you to see that hope is there it's not christmas it's the hope i see in christmas that's my peace the first thing that fear does is it is the enemy of a peaceful heart it actually steals the peace from your life. Uh, I think I talked to two or three of you today. Some of you um, are, your hours have been cut. Uh, some of you are looking for work. All of those things has a tendency, don't they, to affect our peace. But what does it drive you to do? It drives you to pray. It drives you, why? Because that's your peace. It's right here. So it drives you to pray. 
But what is stealing your faith, your, your, your uh, peace? It could be your boss. You don't even like going to work. You don't like your boss. Boss doesn't seem to like you. It's stealing your peace. Maybe it's uh, a fear of sickness. Or maybe it is sickness. I, I know all of you have seen the, Tracy has sent out different emails. She, she is in charge of our prayer. Uh, you could call in and leave a request and she'll send that out and we pray for those prayer requests. And I, I'm trying to find Tracy. I know she was, there, there she is there. And uh, Tracy is going through a time right now and uh, she'll be going uh, to see if the biopsy, am I saying this right? Uh, You'll be, you'll be finding out if, if it's cancerous or not. What's that? It is. So. Things going on. Number one, we'll pray at the end of this service and we'll continue to pray that God heals her. Did you know that's literally possible? <laughs> that's why we have peace. The second thing we'll pray is whatever happens, we do believe in a God that can help her go through whatever happens. See, in this world, we need to help people realize that everything doesn't go the way we want it to go, but we have a God that can do one or the other. I mean, he can do both of them. He can help us go. If God hears that prayer and will actually begin to touch Tracy, that's that peace. And that's where it comes from, out of our heart. But, but what if it's, uh, uh, you know, you're single and you're afraid you're always going to be single? Or you're married and you don't know if you'll ever get out of this marriage? Or she or he will ever change? A fear. What, what about your hot water heater going out? I just threw that one in. That's not a real serious thing. Unless you're in the shower and you're soaked up. Then it becomes pretty serious, right? See, a lot of different things may not be serious for you, but it is serious for somebody else. There's all different types of things, but the only thing we can have in common is inside of us, there can be a peace. That peace can keep us solid. And that's what's to help you go through this, this time of Christmas and that you don't miss the big event. In all of your going and coming and doing and sharing and buying and selling and whatever you're doing, don't miss the big event. Don't miss what it's all about. And that's what this whole series is about, is to help you come back and realize what is the big event. It's Christ being born again in your life, giving you that peace. We are not destined to live with, in fear. We were not designed to live in fear. We were designed to live with a sound mind, clear, Knowing who is in charge of our life. It is a wonderful thing to have a sound mind. Fill with the, the, the spirit of God. Fill with the truth of the word. Knowing who we are in Christ. Mary had a right to be afraid. 12, 15, whatever size angel. I've heard them all sizes. And by the way, they're all men. Oh, I just threw that in. Men, I do believe God is calling you to be angels in people's lives. I believe that. And I believe, women, you are called to be leaders and helpers and guides and comforters. But listen, we all need to be like Mary. We need to not be afraid. Guess what was getting ready to happen in her life? This was different. She didn't have any idea how this was taking place. Here she was going to begin to, you know, have the little bubble. And some of them would say, did you notice Mary today? <laughs> I think she's pregnant. Oh, are you kidding me? She's pregnant? She's not, they, they're not married, are they? No. Wait till I get to go talk about this. See? That, that was going to happen. That definitely was going to take place. There was going to be this ongoing public discussion that was going to be very embarrassing what about her husband i mean this was all so weird that all of a sudden she would be with child she had every reason to be afraid so why did the angel say be not afraid 365 times she got one of the first ones the shepherds were going to get two of them 
We're down now. I can't do the math, but we're losing them right there. They're going down. 365 times, be not afraid. The, the shepherds would be out there. They would just be doing what shepherds do. And he said to them, fear not, fear not, for unto you is born this day a shepherd who is Christ the Lord. I, I just don't want you to miss the big event this Christmas. The second thing is peace comes when our hearts are at peace within us. It is within us is where the peace is. I'm sorry, my second point is after this, this commercial break. You're hitting me, Frank, but take it easy on the Bacardi. Don't you like these newer versions? Oh. God. To old times, my friend. Oh, my God. It's Lou Hayward, your old boss, and your best friend. But you're... Dead. Seven years. Has it been that long? Jeez, I, I mean, to look at you, I wouldn't have guessed more than three tops. Oh, Frank. Frank, you are in trouble. Big trouble. All right. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that you're right, that I am in big trouble. What exactly would that mean? Look at me. Look at your future. Now, if you don't change your ways, you're going to wind up doomed, just as I am. <coughs> One minute, I'm on the 14th hole at Wingfoot, lining up a putt. A heart attack later, I'm a worm feast. No, 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 no. You're not a worm feast. You're a hallucination. Brought on by alcohol, Russian vodka, poisoned by Chernobyl. I've been under a lot of pressure lately. I've been putting on a big... Silence! <coughs> Ouch. I had it all. Ooh. I was a captain of industry. <sighs> Feared by men, adored by women. Ah, adored? Let's be honest, Lou. You paid for the women. I'm warning you, Frank. Don't waste your life as I did mine. Waste? How can you say that? You're a legend in this business. You're the man who invented the miniseries. Mankind should have been my business. Charity, mercy, kindness, that should have been my business. Don't wait. Get yourself involved. Now, it's too late for me, but it's not for you. You can be saved. This changes his whole life. Let me just stop for a second. If you were just to pause in your mind, and think about, what do you worry about? What are you worrying about? I, I can think of two things right now pretty quick. What are you worrying about? Maybe not anything at this moment. Is it finances? Is it a relationship? Maybe with your kids, with your teenagers, with, with your wife, with your husband. Is, you know, what are you worrying about? Matter of fact, I want to ask you to start thinking about those things because I don't think it's any good to have a sermon and not have it ap uh, not apply it. What is stealing your peace? What is causing you not to be at peace? Of course, you know, my age, I'm looking at a time that uh, probably y'all won't want to pay me anymore for sitting at home and doing nothing. And I imagine, you know, the salary will change. Uh, you know, there, there are, am I ready for that point in my life? That At this point, I need to look at that pretty closely. See, there's things in your life you're coming to or have come to, or it, it, it may be just, you know, taking your driver's license test next week. I, you know, I don't know where you're at, but the point of it is, what are you worrying about? What is stealing peace out of your life? See, a peaceful heart, think of it in the light of Mary. A peaceful heart is able in any challenge that she is going to have, she's able to face it with peace. 
She's able to work through it. She's able not to give up or quit. She's able to move forward and keep the peace inside, even though she may have to stop for a day and pray some. She may have to work a little harder. We may have to do something extra to prepare. We're still moving forward in peace. And I think that's the story that Christmas is about. It's a time of great remembering of having Jesus come into this world that's going to change our life forever. That's why funerals so upset me when when I don't know they go to heaven. I I just, I actually almost, it's a terrifying moment for me because I see that person in that lost condition. And I wonder why doesn't it motivate me more though to talk to people today and encourage them about the wonderful Savior. See, that's why we gave you that, that devotional book is maybe during this time that you could encourage friends to come because they're looking for this peace. They're looking for it. We're all looking for this peace. And we lose it at times, but we we seek it out again in prayer and with friends. We talk and we share and we get back to the point of the peace in our life. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor. Now, all of you, if you're a Christian today, you have found favor, right? With God. You have found favor with God. So you could hear the words, whatever you're going through today, you could hear the words, be not afraid. You have found favor with God. You are one of my children. You're one of my kids. You have found favor with me. So you are going to conceive. Every one of us, God is trying to conceive ideas and plans and, and, and hopes and wishes. He's trying to conceive those things in us. Life is never still, is it? He's always trying to conceive things. How could I help someone? What could I do? How could I do the business in a way to help people more? How could I be a better, uh, 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 more of a light at work? See, he's always trying to conceive these things in us, and he wants them to do what? Come to birth. He wants them to come forth. He wants them to come forth in our friends. He wants them to come forth in our family. If, If Christmas could mean anything, he wants to be birthed in you through a concept or an idea that would also help somebody else. Not only just salvation, of course, is foremost. I can't encourage you enough during this time to let the peace rule in your life because I think that's what's going to change your friends. But what was her response to this? What was Mary's response? I take you to the next verse, verse 34. How will this be? That would have been a hard question, wouldn't it? I mean, you're going to get pregnant and, um, you know, there's not going to be a husband. There's not going to be any uh, affair. Uh, You're just going to get pregnant. Yeah, that happens every day of the week. That's just normal around here. No, it's a it's a it's a miracle. It's an unbelievable miracle. You, You can't explain it. Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. I was going to comment on that. I had it in my notes to comment on that. Uh, But I won't. Because that's that's kind of new today. That's kind of a concept we don't hear much anymore. But she said, I'm a virgin. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Did you think the Holy Spirit was just a part of our world and our day? No. She understood what the Holy Spirit was. He said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Wow. What did she say? Only somebody with peace. Only somebody. I I can't imagine what I would think at that moment. I would have doubted. I would have gone through all type of how, what, when, how is this going to look? I mean, what are they going to say? I mean, it's just going to be scary. Uh, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left. Have you ever had your wife come home and, and she was expecting you to, you went to, a, uh, let's, let's use job interview, you know, you went to a job interview and, and your wife comes home and she says, did you get it? And you say, well, um, yes, I got it. Now y'all are supposed to laugh right there. It's a, that's a joke. Uh, because see that you're supposed to feel that with me, you know, you know how you always kind of lie to your, you somebody for a little while, you're trying to get them to feel sorry or, or doubt or fear or something. And then you say, yes, I got it. Well, see, this is what happened with the angels. They didn't get to see this on earth. I don't think theologically, I don't know if I'm right, 
But I believe when the angel got back to heaven, I believe they were all standing there waiting on the angel. And I think the angel said, did she, did she agree? Did she agree? Did she accept? And he said, oh, well, you know, those humans down there. Yeah, she did. And I think all of heaven began to sing and shout because a woman on earth that had every right to turn it down, had every right to, in fear and doubt to, to go in that direction. But what did she do? She said, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. Now, I know in that day they all were expecting the Messiah to come, and I know this was a big thing in culture, but I'll tell you what, they didn't know a lot about it because they didn't even know where to go look for him. Most of the people didn't. So they hadn't been reading the Bible very well, but maybe, maybe Mary had read Isaiah 7, 14, which was written 600 years before Jesus came. And it said in 7, 6, uh, 14, Isaiah, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Maybe she had read that. Maybe that's why the peace was there so deeply, because she had read that verse. And so this was not so much of a shock because she knew the word of God. I'm just telling you, in the day and age you live, with all this happening in our world, you need to know what your faith is grounded upon. You need to have peace in your heart, and you need to know the word. And you need to know that he says he will look after you. He will cover you with his wings. He will take care of you. And these words will come back to you in the years to come in America because we will be shaken. And in that shaking, what do we have? We have a Messiah. We have an Emmanuel. And he is being born again in our lives today. The third thing that will happen if you have this peace in your life you will find that you will be able to face anything and everything that comes into your life. You'll be ready for a lifetime. Because even though Jesus was going to, in public, he was going to be just smeared. I mean, can you imagine what Facebook was looking, looking like on Jesus? Can you imagine what the news was saying about Jesus? All of these things. She was mom, and she had to bear all the blunt of that. But when you have that peace, then you're able to deal with all of that. You're able to deal with criticism. You're able to deal with people that are angry at you or in your face or, you know, are, are not happy with you. You're able to deal with it because why? You have peace in your life. Well, I'm going to show you one more clip. That happened because it's Christmas Eve, I'm telling you. I'm not crazy. It's Christmas Eve. It's, it's the one night of the year when we all act a little nicer. We... We, we smile a little easier, we, 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 we share a little more. For a couple of hours out of the whole year, we are the people that we always hoped we would be. It's a miracle. It's really a sort of a miracle because it happens every Christmas Eve. And if you waste that miracle, you're gonna burn for it. I know what I'm talking about. You have to do something, you have to take a chance. You do have to get involved. There are people that are having, having trouble making their miracle happen. There are people that don't have enough to eat. There are people that are cold. You can go out and say hello to these people. You can take an old blanket out of the closet and say, here, you can make them a sandwich and say, oh, by the way, here. I get it now. And if you, if you give, then, you, then it can happen. Then the miracle can happen to you. It's not just the poor and the hungry. It's, it's everybody who's got to have this miracle. And it can happen tonight for all of you. You know, even when he's serious, he doesn't sound serious, does he? he I don't think that guy can be serious. I, I really don't. Now, this is the last of A Christmas Carol that was put out, uh, the newer version. You know, and I, I watched all of these through a couple of times. And I realized that there's so much truth in that that we really can change. We really can have peace in our hearts. We really can. We really can live a Christian life on this earth. We can change. Whatever it is that is bugging you, whatever is happening in your life, I, I know that is just a story, but yet the truth of that Christmas, the, the, that movie is saying to us in a special way, 
you can change. Now, I know he's talking to the world. I know that, you know, it's, it's but, but we as Christians, I, I just want you to think, we as Christians, we should be able to doubly say, I can change. Whatever it is, see, whatever it is that's keeping us from being excited about life, being excited about Jesus, being excited about the kingdom, whatever it is that's, that's pulling at us right now, we should be able to find peace. And we should be able to walk in it. But we have, we have a tendency to wallow in things, don't we? We have a tendency to let something keep bugging us. We have a tendency. I don't know if you all know it, but after preachers preach on Sunday, their worst time of the week is Monday morning. That's the worst time of the week. It's a funny thing. You, you, Monday morning you get up and you start thinking of all the things you did bad or wrong or miss, or said in the wrong way, or didn't do good, because you, you analyze yourself. You have to. It's just human, I guess. But then when Costa was here, he said, Villard, you can change that. And I said, how? He said, well, he said, and he talked to me all the way home about this. He was staying with us. On the way home, he said, here's what I do. First thing I do on Monday morning, I get up, and I begin to worship and praise God. I get up and I, I just praise him and I worship him. I, you know, I just find the time to just praise how great he is and how wonderful he is. And he says, I have found that if I'll do that, and sometimes I, I start on, on, sat on Sunday night, but most of the time it seems like it doesn't hit me. The adrenaline is still high. And he says, it's, it's usually Monday morning when all of that's kind of died down. Then I begin to analyze and go through. He says, I begin to praise God on Monday mornings. And he says, everything has changed in my life. He says, now I no longer face that depression that comes after the service, after the emotion, after the adrenaline high. You, 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 you win this battle. And so that, that is, I, I listened to that and I said, yes, I, I can change. I, I'm 60 I'm some odd years old, but I think I can change. And I tell you today, I don't care where you're at in your life, you can walk in an exciting peace. You can, you can walk with a joy in your life that will spread to people around you. You can make a difference as you bump into people. You can make a difference as you go through all the things that are happening this season, all year long. You can make such a difference in people's lives. And, and that's really what this is all about. Some of you need to actually surrender the, the leadership of your life to God this morning. You actually you need to surrender it to him. You love controlling your life. You love controlling what's happening, what's going on in your life. You need to surrender the control. You need to ask that God would give you this gift of lasting peace. You need to ask for it. God, I want to walk in peace today at work. I want to walk in peace with my wife. See, that's where I am the most unpeaceful is with my wife. That's where I let it, you know, what you'd say, let it all hang out. I just, and if I'm grumpy, I'm really grumpy with her. Because why? I just got to have somebody I can be honest with. That's okay. But we should be able to sit down in prayer and win that battle and be at peace with each other. We need that so much in our life. I, I think you need to ask God to convince you of how much he loves you. And that's where it all started in the communion. When you said the words, Villard, I died for you. That's what I heard. This morning, that's what Jesus simply was saying to me before I got up here. Villard, I died for you. I died for you. You are an incredibly valuable person. Now go forth and and be that person. Go forth and act that person. Let me close by just saying: Would you write down in your mind? Probably should have given you something to write with and a pad to write it down because some of you there'd be thirty-five or so. What are the things that are stealing your peace? Not going to go on until you have one at least. You may be here a while. Okay. What's that one thing that's stealing your peace right now? I know for some of you, I talk, I talk to as many people as I can when you come in. And you know what I'm trying to find out? I'm trying to find out what is going on in this person's life because I want to pray for them. And I want to pray for them throughout the, throughout the week. And, and I try to remember as many as I can because that's, that is, I think, so important. Because whatever's stealing their peace, I want to know about it. I think you need to go down that list and, 
my first one would be say, God, I, I want to surrender this area of uh, transition that will lead into retirement. I know I want to I want to surrender that area. I want to be frugal. I want to be careful. But Lord, I want to surrender. Did you know I have a lot better chance of retiring in good shape if I surrender that to God? So I'm going to do that. For you, ask God's spirit to fill you as you completely surrender your life to him. Would you just bow your heads and think about that for a moment? Lord, we're looking right now at those areas that we we fear. And fear chokes us Christians. Fear chokes us back. It may be giving our tithes. It may be sharing with a friend. It may be being generous this Christmas season. It may be forgiving our mate, uh, something that has just happened and we can't seem to work through it. It may be forgiving our father, a mother, uh, a, a boss. Lord, whatever is stealing our peace right now, would you bring that before us and give us a heart to ask you to forgive us for, for l- losing this peace? And would you bring that peace back into our heart right now? Would you bring it back into our life right now? We lay it before you. And we ask you to take it. There was a man by the name of Friedrich Nietzsche, an atheistic German philosopher. And he made this kind of smart aleck remark one time to some Christians. He said, if you want me to believe in your Redeemer, then you've got to look a lot more redeemed. And I said to myself, Lord, I want to be one that looks redeemed. Through this Christmas season, I want to be a part of the redeemed. And I want to have this peace in my life. Would you stand with me? And if you have an area that you are actually struggling with, struggling walking in peace, struggling staying in the peace, it comes back. You, you get victory, and then it just comes back. I'm, I'm asking that a group of you maybe, I, I, I don't think this is any problem, but I, I would just gather around Earl and Tracy. Maybe up here, Earl and Tracy, but back there, any, any, anywhere, just gather around because, see, we, we want to pray that God's Spirit would start moving upon her in a special way. If you're dealing with one of these areas, I, I don't know, I feel the emotion kind of low in, in, the, in, in the crowd today. I feel it kind of low here. But I feel a strong sensitivity in my heart that God would really like to restore some peace. Lord, right now, would you, would you restore peace? Help us to deal with what we're dealing with. We brought this before you two or three times in the service because we didn't want to leave here without really bringing it to the forefront, really making ourselves deal with it, not just coming to church and going home and another service is over, another Sunday is passing by. And now we're eating lunch again, but we haven't really dealt with that area of our life. Lord, if there's someone here, they're just struggling deeply with working through this area in their life, I, I pray you'll give them strength and courage to come and get prayer. There'll be people on both sides willing to pray with you and encourage you. You may want to slip out before even the people start to move out. You may just want to slip out and move over to the, to the side, over by the communion table or over by the Christmas tree. Just, you just move out. God, I don't, I don't want to, to not do this. I want to do it. I want to pray. I don't want to carry this in my life for another week. Now, Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you so much that you changed our life. You made us new. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Hope it's a great week. Be safe.